Yeah. Yeah, Jess, but you have to help me. I can't build it on my own. Yeah. Yeah, but I've got. I've got to warn you, Jasper. Well, you follow the instructions, which actually is very simple. You'll be pleased to know. But uh, don't stand on table, please. I'm not using my. Yeah, can you can you get off the table? Because we're going to put this stuff on it. Oh. Right. We're building a solar car. That's how we're going to start today. Also, I'm not using my normal at-home camera because I'm basically trying this one out as a sort of main shooting camera because I'm thinking I'm probably just going to take the small one to America. You know, it just makes packing so much easier. I've already read the instructions. It's actually really simple. You need to put this wheel in the front bit there. That's right. You need to put the back wheels in the back bit. Okay, Daddy. There you go, perfect. You see this wire? Ah. As you put it through that hole. There you go, just gently, really gently. Feed it through. There you go, perfect. This is the solar panel. This is what will make it work when the sun hits it. But what we have to do is we have to put this wire into the electric motor here. Okay, we don't have any sun, but... Come on, let's take it outside and have a quick look. We'll have to wait for a sunnier day, monkey. Uh, I was kind of hoping that cloudy would be enough for at least something. But it turns out cloudy is not enough for anything. When it's a nice sunny day, we'll be able to see it working, okay? Hello. Aha. Okay, so the idea is that this is going to enable me to keep my laptop functional for a little bit longer. So I've already got quite a lot of these external battery banks, but I've tried them all out and none of them have got enough power to actually work with the laptop. We've got a nifty little power brick, which I think actually can independently charge this, which is extremely useful. I shouldn't need to actually take the Apple charge cable with me. If I plug this into here, looking good. I'm, I really like this. This thing is tiny. What is it? What's the capacity? I think the capacity should be about 95 watt hours. I want to see if this will actually power the the laptop, which is of course its primary job in life. I've got another power bank, a uh, power gorilla it's called, 77 watt hours, so a little bit less capacity. If I try and plug it into the laptop, which you have to do via a 12 volt adapter and a cigarette lighter sort of cable, it basically just tries to draw too much power from the power bank, so the power bank goes into emergency shut off mode. You can't even get the power bank back to life unless you plug it into a a main supply so that's obviously not going to work for me at all in a you know airline type situation so i'm going to go and take this and plug it in okay pointing and now what i'm going to do is talk about tesla because there's been a post on the teslamotorclub.com i think is the forum address and it's basically about the fact that one of the tesla owners in the us has had a car for a year and he's done 30,000 miles and he noticed that the charge rate at superchargers seemed to be less than it was when the car was brand new. Now this guy does almost all his charging from either Chadamo or a supercharger, mostly Chadamo. And he spoke to the Tesla engineers about this, inquiring, you know, is there something wrong with the car? Why is it only charging at 90 kilowatts now at full power on a supercharger rather than 120 odd? Well, it turns out, according to this Tesla engineer who contacted the mothership in Fremont in order to get a definitive answer, that there's an internal software counter. And once it's notched up a certain number of DC high power charges, of which Chadamo is included in that, it limits the charge rate at superchargers in an effort to try and prolong the life of the batteries. And I've got some personal experience with this, I think, in that I've had my car now for over two and a half years, almost three years, and I've put on it 
just a whisker under 70,000 miles. I do still get 110 kilowatts of, of charging speed from a supercharger when the battery is properly warm and it does need to be properly warm. So, you know, certainly not in the first half of any kind of a journey, but towards the end of a journey when I've done a couple of hundred miles, if it's at 30 odd percent, as that gets up much beyond that, it drops down quite quickly to about 70 to 60. I can't remember exactly how it used to work. I think maybe it used to charge a little bit quicker in that middle section. I'm not sure. But I've done quite a lot of quick charges. Basically, any time I ever do a long journey, I tend to be stopping to, you know, do a Chadamo charge, then a supercharge, then probably another Chadamo charge. It happens a lot. So I don't think it's a massive problem. I really don't. I do think there's a lot of things that go on in the internal software in a Tesla car to try and prolong the battery and to keep it healthy for as long as possible. And most of those things people don't know about or want to know about. And Tesla doesn't particularly want to talk about them because if it did, what would happen is people would get all worried and like, oh my goodness, this is a massive problem. My cars are going to self-limit and I'm going to stop doing this and start doing that. And it will all just be a big hassle, which is not what Tesla wants for its owners. I think the fact that Tesla will answer the question when a customer asks is what they should do, of course. But I don't think that it's a massive problem that people you know, that they don't automatically stick every last caveat to do with the way the software works on their website. I think it would be a bit off-putting for people if they did that. And ultimately, it's not like you get that with petrol and diesel manufacturers. You know, they don't go, okay, well, the car will do this sort of amount of power when you buy it new, then it will increase a bit as the you know, engine wears in, but then of course you're going to have a tapering of power and the fuel economy is going to get worse and it's going to do this and after five years we're going to be blah 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 and it's all majorly complicated and no they don't do that. It's just not what the average car buyer wants to know. We're on 80% now. To say I'm excited about that is such an understatement. I was really concerned because the problem with editing is it does use a huge amount of power. So I can easily get through that whole battery in about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. You know, yes, if I was just going to read an ebook or something, or even watch movies, then it would last for hours and hours and hours. But editing is a different kettle of fish. Now, I'm going to try and do all the heavy pre rendering long before I actually get onto the plane. Then I won't actually do the final rendering until I'm back at a, a power socket, and hopefully, I can make good use of all this time in the sky. To just do absolutely nothing constructive for 10 hours is just seems like a massive waste. Back briefly with Tesla, I'm personally very pleased that Tesla goes to, you know, such lengths to try and improve and, you know, maintain the longevity of the batteries from a range point of view, because I want to keep the car for a long time and I want it to have good range for as long as possible. So hopefully all that good work that Tesla has been doing is part of the reason why there are people out there who've driven hundreds of thousands of miles and I've only got like 9% battery degradation. That's what I'm hoping to see. And I think I need to um, grab Jasper and we're gonna go do some emergency shopping because the house has got no coffee pods, not enough milk, no orange juice, no cereal, no bread, no salad. In fact, basically, it's like a shell. There's like nothing in here except a laptop and a battery. Not quite, There's, look, it's really annoying. There's not quite enough sunlight, monkey. Okay, Jasper, got the shopping bag. You need to pop your shoes on. Right, let's go in. Oh dear. Soph's not going to be impressed with that. Let's go home and have a pizza. Jasper out the car. Uh, just before I left, I actually uh, had a quick look at my laptop and unplugged it, of course. Come on, how you get, monkey? Leave the food alone. Oi! Out! Come on. And it has successfully charged up. This thing is brilliant, so okay. oh, This what? is a battery what? and this what? is a power supply. But what's great about it is I can plug my laptop in at the same time, either directly to that or through the battery, and the battery can power the laptop as well. So it's basically like the perfect travel power system. Oh, for your trip. 
Yeah. Out of every single thing that I own, all the battery banks, the whole lot, not a single one of them actually has enough power in it to run my laptop. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, they're quite... Yeah, I mean, that's like an 85 watt laptop. In they run yours. Right, anyway. I think now's a good time to say goodbye for the day. It's so spam. Just needs to go to bed. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. Yeah, it can get quite wide angle if I sort of hold it out a good ways. Yeah. I think that's all right. What do you reckon, Jazzy? Is this camera going to do the job? Yeah. Well, there you go. He seems to think it's going to work. Right, let's build solar cars.